All right, good morning, everybody. We'll wait for a few more people to get logged on here. We're going to talk about the tropics. Once again, let me know if you can hear me okay. Occasionally, we have audio issues. Uh, but we'll get started here in just a few seconds, and we'll talk about Zeta, the latest model data, and what is hopefully our last tropical system of the season. So um, I sound pretty good on my end, so we'll get started in what we've got going on. Here is the latest on Zeta. You can see there a tropical storm. Um, still 40 mile per hour winds with it, so it really hasn't organized much overnight, but it did strengthen into a tropical storm overnight. That's the big story that a lot of people are waking up to this morning. It is basically stationary um, out there this morning, and the center of it had a little trouble trying to determine where the exact center is because, well, that's just to be expected with these kind of unorganized early systems like what we're dealing with. So um, not expecting any significant changes today, but that is the latest as of the 10 a.m. advisory, still a weak tropical storm. Here's the latest track on it. It is going to start to eventually move northwest towards the Yucatan Peninsula, uh, kind of the tip of Yucatan there, as we go into Monday. So it's not going to be moving very fast this weekend. It's going to hang out down here through tonight. Will gradually strengthen. There's a lot of warm water down here and relatively low shear. So we do expect this to strengthen. And then potentially be near Category 1 strength as it gets close to the Yucatan. And then possibly a Category 1 storm once it gets into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, once it gets into the Gulf in this portion, notice how it eventually starts to make that northerly turn. That's because the trough, that upper level low, is going to start forming. That cold front is going to start to swing down. That will start to turn into the north. And that should cap off the intensity, if not to start to weaken it as it gets into here. So that's why we don't have this really strengthening much more than a weak Category 1 storm in here. Uh, because as it gets closer to the northern Gulf Coast, the wind shear will increase. And the water temperatures, you know, they're not cold, but they're certainly not hot, hot. So here's the latest cone as it gets closer to uh, Louisiana and possibly Mississippi over towards Florida. Still in the cone, but this is Wednesday morning off the coast. You can see there they still have us at a Cat 1, uh, but we're thinking it will be weakening during this process. It's just how quickly does it weaken. It's certainly possible it gets close to the coast here as a Category 1 storm, maybe a strong tropical storm, or maybe a rapidly weakening tropical storm. That is a possibility with this system as we go into Wednesday. So landfall still looks to be around Wednesday from central Louisiana, still all the way over to the Florida Panhandle. The big part of this forecast is going to be how this thing turns. And this is not a normal setup like in August. You don't have these cold fronts in August. You don't have these big troughs of low pressure coming down. So the turn with this could be fairly quick, meaning it could be coming this direction. And as that trough and front swing on down, this thing could hook towards the northeast pretty quickly. So it could get to the coast here and then decide it wants to go straight over towards Mobile, straight over towards Pensacola. Or if that front is a little bit slower, this thing could creep up a bit further before we start to see that quick turn. So that's going to be the big question. And of course, that's a nightmare when you're talking about the forecast and what impacts we'll feel here. But overall, from central Louisiana to the Florida Panhandle, at least the far western part of the Florida Panhandle, all in play for the landfall from Zeta as we go into Wednesday. Moving fast, though, this is not going to be a slow mover. This is not going to be a widespread flooding event, it doesn't look like. Uh, because notice by Thursday morning, in 24 hours, it's already up into nearly Tennessee. So uh, it is going to be moving, uh, booking it across the area. Here's the latest on our tropical models. Some of these models are out in la-la land. I mean, they're absolutely just... <laughs> you can see, anytime you get models that are spitting out the center up here, they're, they're confused on what's going on. We think the center is here, so most of these models are fixed in. At least these ones focus on more so. Um, because as we go into Tuesday, Wednesday, they all show that curve. They're all in agreement with that. The big question is still just kind of when does that curve happen and how quick does it happen? So notice there's a tight cluster right over southeast Louisiana that brings it up through south Mississippi. It's possible that it tries to hook a little bit quicker and comes up to Mobile. Just all a possibility, but relatively decent agreement speaking this far out. You know, you're far out. You're five days away from this making landfall. At least, well, we'll say four days out from this making landfall. You don't expect... Um, you know, complete agreement in this process, but we've got some agreement that it is generally going to do this track northwest, north, northeast. It's all about timing, though, so that's what we'll be watching. Now, talking about the intensity, I've had some questions about, you know, there's we've had these storms this season that have they've almost surprised us in some ways on the intensity, 
And we're getting to that part of the season where it's very difficult to get major, major storms in the Gulf of Mexico, in the northern Gulf of Mexico. The Caribbean is still boiling hot right now. I mean, it could sustain a significant storm down there. It doesn't look like it'll happen because it's just slowly organizing. Uh, but as we go, we're talking about the steering currents and the wind shear here. As we go into um, Monday, notice just then getting to the Yucatan, it's going to start to ride around this ridge of high pressure sitting over Florida. That will start to steer it into the Gulf of Mexico. And as we go further in time, you see that as we get to um, Wednesday, this is Wednesday morning, sitting off the coast, it will start to speed up. And that's because this trough, see this huge cutoff low, very, very uh, big cutoff low is going to be swinging down through Texas. This is going to start to pull on this thing. It will start to pull it more north. But look at all these strong winds associated with this cutoff low and the cold fronts embedded in here too, by the way. That is wind shear that's going to start to push on this thing and going to start to come out of the southwest. And what that will do is it will start to stretch out the vortex, the system. And as we get into Thursday morning after landfall, notice the troughs here. This is just blasting this system with wind shear out the southwest. So it will likely be a very lopsided wet system on the east side, dry side on the west side. Very typical when you get these lopsided systems like this. So overall, the wind shear is going to increase significantly as it gets closer to the coast. So this thing could very well weaken quickly. It might maintain its intensity. It's hard to say at this point. It really is. So that's why we're not looking at, you know, a major storm blowing up out of this as it gets closer to the north coast, north Gulf Coast as we go into Wednesday. Then by Friday, this thing's out of here. We've got cooler air and sunshine across the area. So that is, uh, I know, something we're all looking forward to just in time for Halloween. So great news there. Also, looking at the water temperatures, and these are actual water temperatures. They don't satellite drive. These are buoys out there. Sitting at 78, um, I believe that's Southwest Pass, just, you know, south of Grand Isle. Look at the water temperature down here in the Caribbean. I mean, it is boiling hot. 86, 88 down here in some locations, not popping up. So plenty warm down here. It is plenty warm in the central and southern Gulf to sustain maybe a Cat 1 storm. And then as you get into the northern Gulf, where well, you're getting into your colder waters. This is enough to sustain a tropical system, but... When you start getting in the 70s, you're not going to have a big, big hurricane with temperatures in the 70s. However, the 70s don't go too far out. So, yes, cooler waters, but uh, more the inhibiting factor is going to be wind shear and it's a dry air going to get to try to push up into that vortex of Zeta. So, speaking of scenarios, um, kind of a wide range of scenarios that kind of play out here with regard to do we see impacts or do we see absolutely nothing at all here in southeast Louisiana. The cone right now, the center of it, and we try not to focus on the center of the cone, so I'm going to give you multiple scenarios here. This would bring impacts to southeast Louisiana and even more so to Mississippi and Alabama. And really, you know, this thing will track, it would start making that northeast turn, so it could bring impacts to southeast Louisiana and south Mississippi and Alabama and the Florida Panhandle. So this would bring coastal flooding, storm surge, winds, certainly winds, um, can sometimes surprise you in these tropical storms like this that are weakening but interacting with a cold front and a trough like this one is going to be doing. Remember Olga last year, it actually moved through about this time last year. It wasn't even a tropical system when it moved through, but it produced 70 plus mile per hour winds across our area. So that's why you've got to kind of watch these things. You can certainly get power outages and the winds can sometimes surprise you. Rainfall threat looks to be relatively low or you would see heavy rainfall in this, in this case and localized street flooding, I'm sure. But the widespread flooding wouldn't be an issue because it's moving so fast. Other scenario that is still a possibility. This thing moves further to the west. We get rainfall, some coastal flooding, some winds here in southeast Louisiana and south central Louisiana. That's a possibility. Um, best case scenario, and this is a possibility. And this is just as much a possibility as it going to our west at this point. It tries, it comes up, it gets right to the coast and it veers to the northeast, it goes to Mobile, it goes to Pensacola, and we hardly get anything from it. That's a possibility. So before, you know, you start screaming after this that, you know, the forecast wasn't right, this is a possibility, you know, we've got to communicate that. But at the same time, you can't, you know, expect this to happen. You have to say, well, it could come here and we need to at least uh, monitor and prepare as, as you need to. I also want to show you one other thing before I leave you, and it is um, two of our big models, the GFS and the Euro, and there's very big differences between the two. This is Wednesday afternoon at 2 p.m. The GFS has been quicker on the system. 
um, and quicker, I shouldn't say on the system, more quick on the coal front and the trough coming on down. So what that does is it turns it a little bit more quicker and it pulls it to the north quicker, making landfall sooner. It has the system making landfall in Mobile. Notice how dry we are here Wednesday afternoon. The possibility if that trough speeds up and that coal front speeds up. And we're going to see the difference between this trough and coal front, maybe 12 hours. It's got the storm coming further west and possibly a little bit stronger too, um, the Euro has it, making landfall in southeast Louisiana near Homa, Morgan City, somewhere in there, and then coming right up over us as it eventually starts to curve up this direction. That would bring impacts to the area with heavy rainfall, probably some high winds, and um, of course some coastal flooding from storm surge as well. So that's one of those scenarios that we, um, the two different kind of very vastly different outcomes with regards to impact, but very minor changes in the details of the forecast, like the timing of the trough and things like that. So it's just one of those nightmare forecasts. It really is. The good news today is going to be nice. We'll have clouds most of the day. It is going to be cold today for the Saints game. It's going to feel like football weather. Tomorrow, a little bit warmer. Tuesday, we'll see some showers and storms. I think regardless of what track, we'll see some of that moisture flowing up into the area, and that will bring um, some disturbed, you know, some showers and thunderstorms. Wednesday will be the main day. I only have a 50% chance of rain right now because we're still not sure if it's going to go, if it's going to skirt us or if it's going to come right over us. So that rain chance could go up or go down. By Thursday, we're looking like we're clearing out. The cool front moves in. Look at Friday, upper 60s. Sunshine, Halloween, sunshine, cool temperatures. It's going to feel nice and cool if you're going to do any um, thing for Halloween. So some great news there. So that does it for the 10 a.m. update, everybody. Thanks so much for joining me. Uh, we'll have, of course, a 1 p.m. update, but the next big one comes in at 4 p.m. This is our seventh storm this season that we are tracking. It could potentially be our fifth landfalling hurt, our storm of the season um, for Louisiana. By the way, that would be a record. We've only ever maxed out at four. We're currently tied with that. It happened in 2002. So what's the word this season? Unprecedented in so many ways. And here we go again. Hopefully this is um, it after Zeta. By the way, Zeta um, is the furthest we've ever got with the listed names. It's not the furthest. We still aren't to the 2005 record because there was an unnamed storm that was gone back and classified. So technically there were 28 named tropical systems in 2005. This would be 27. So we would have to get to ADA to tie the 05 record um, at this point. So and I'm fine with not breaking that record. But hurricane season goes until November 30th. All right. Thanks, everybody, so much for joining me. Have a wonderful Sunday. Have a wonderful Monday. Enjoy the cooler weather because, well, Wednesday uh, could be, you know, dealing with Zeta. Thanks, everybody.